so I am not an eye doctor and there are therefore very few types of eye drops that I would ever initiate the prescription of for a patient. Lubricating eye drops are by far the most common type of eye drops that I do prescribe and when I do need to prescribe them I go for hypromellose eye drops so I thought I'd just make a small video about these. So they come as a small bottle that contains fluid which has within it this chemical hypromellose and this fluid with the hypromellose in is very good for lubricating the surface of the eyes. So to apply it you quite simply uh, tilt your head upwards and then turn the bottle upside down and drop a small droplet of the uh, fluid onto the eyeball and then you blink a few times and it then is distributed over the surface of the eyeball and you do that for each eyeball. And the purpose of applying these drops is to lubricate the surface of the eyes. Now, in the case of most individuals, this is not necessary. Our, the surface of our eyes produces a natural lubrication and therefore our eyes don't dry out. However, for many individuals, they do suffer from problems with this natural production of lubrication and they do end up with very dry eyeballs. The reason for this can be just idiopathic. Some people just develop it and it can happen to young and old people though it's probably more common in older people. However, far more common than it just happening is for it to be a side effect of medication that people are taking. So a huge number of different medicines have dry eyes as a side effect. So until proven otherwise, I would say if someone comes to you complaining of dry eyes, it is probably a medication side effect. The only time when I would conclude that it's not due to a medication would be if you've one, gone through every single medication that the individual is on and looked them all up in the BNF or some other prescribing manual, looked up their side effects and none of them have dry eyes as a side effect, or two, if the individual's on no medications, then of course you can't blame it on medications. So if you go on the internet and Google dry eyes, you will find that there are some extremely long fancy medical terms for this condition. However, I have never in clinical practice ever heard another doctor use these terms. Instead, we just use the term dry eyes to describe the condition where an individual has dry eyes. Maybe actual eye doctors do use the long term. I've never worked with ophthalmologists before, uh, so I don't know. But all other clinicians that I've ever encountered, including general practitioners that deal with a lot of eye problems, simple eye problems, I've never heard them use these longer terms that you can find on the internet. So I would just refer to the condition as dry eyes, say the patient has dry eyes, diagnose the patient with dry eyes. And this can get really bad and really troublesome for individuals. If the eyes get dry enough, they actually get so irritated from the dryness that they can become inflamed. So the surface that covers most of the eyeball is called the conjunctiva. And when it becomes irritated and inflamed, we call that conjunctivitis. And it gives you the appearance of red eyes or pink eyes often. So the white portion of the eye, the sclera that is visible underneath the conjunctiva, this when the conjunctiva is inflamed is instead going to appear pink, maybe even red if the inflammation is bad enough. So the eyes when you develop conjunctivitis will be red, they'll be sore. The pain usually isn't that bad. If someone's got re a red eye and really severe pain, you need to be thinking maybe something more dangerous is happening to that individual's eye, such as uveitis or scleritis, much rarer, but much more serious causes of red eye. Uh, but conjunctivitis, it will more be a soreness rather than a severe eye pain. And then also, the eye, often when people's conjunctiva becomes inflamed, it makes it very itchy as well. And then if the individual does succumb to the desire to itch their eyes, all that itching is going to do is make the inflammation even worse and probably lead the uh, eyelids to become inflamed as well from the itching. Uh, so you'll get then blepharitis on top of the conjunctivitis. And there is actually a fancy word that I'll just write down in a moment for the com combination of blepharitis and conjunctivitis. We can call that blepharoconjunctivitis. 
So these are very good words to have written down actually. So conjunctivitis is red, sore, itchy eyes. So it's inflammation of the conjunctiva, which is the membrane that covers most of the uh, front of the eyeball. It covers the white portion of the eyeball that is visible. It doesn't cover quite the um, coloured iris part that you can see at the front. So that's actually covered by the cornea. Uh, and doesn't have a conjunctival layer over the top, which is why when someone does get conjunctivitis, that bit doesn't actually become red. Indeed, if it was to become red, of course, you'd then have problems seeing, and that's not the case. Uh, so uh, that's why conjunctivitis pink eye, uh, as it's known colloquially, doesn't result in vision problems. If the cornea becomes inflamed, that's a separate problem, and that's called keratitis. And usually, usually, thankfully, dry eyes does not result quite in keratitis. But dry eyes can result in these problems as well, blepharitis. So blepharitis means inflammation of the eyelid. So it results in red, sore, and actually another thing to add there would be swollen eyelids. Uh, so if you've never seen people with these conditions, do Google them, do Google what conjunctivitis looks like and what blepharitis looks like. And in fact, dry eyes can result in both the conjunctiva becoming inflamed and irritated and the eyelids becoming inflamed and irritated because, of course, the eyelids, the undersurface of those, they, um, they cover the eye as well. So underneath the eyelid, um, it is facing onto the conjunctiva, it faces onto the eyeball, uh, and that surface between the eyelid and the eyeball, that is lubricated by this lubrication that is produced for the surface of the eyeball. So if you've got dry eyes, again, that undersurface of the eyelids can become irritated and inflamed, uh, resulting in blepharitis. So dry eyes can produce not just conjunctivitis, but also blepharitis. And the word for the combination of both of them is blepharoconjunctivitis. Just another point that if you get isolated blepharitis from your dry eyes and not conjunctivitis, usually blepharitis is not itchy, it's just red, sore, swollen eyelids, whereas conjunctivitis has a nasty habit of being an itchy inflammation. And if you then do succumb, as I said earlier, to that itch, it's just going to make the conjunctivitis worse. And often, if you didn't have blepharitis prior to um, not itching and just had conjunctivitis from your dry eyes, the itching of the eyes will then irritate the eyelids and result in you getting blepharitis as well.